So this is simply a kippah, we call it in Yiddish a yarmulke. Um, at various times in my youth, I needed to wear one of these. Uh, whenever I went, I went to both Jewish and public schools growing up. Uh, two days a week, we would be released early from our uh, public school, and we would go to the Jewish school, and where we would wear a kippah. And so if in the synagogue, before the time of Rosh Hashanah, before these three high holy days, a Jewish man would wear the kippah, which they would tell you is a sign of respect for God. Then they would have, uh, carrying to synagogue, they would have this item, and this is a prayer shawl, called in Hebrew a talit, and the prayer shawl is there because it has fringes on the corners. In the scriptures, in Leviticus and in Deuteronomy, there is, and in Numbers, there is a rule that says, thou shalt make fringes on the corners of thy garments. And the fringes were there to remind individuals that they were followers of the Mosaic law. So the garment, the very garment, the very clothing that you wore, day in and day out, was serving to remind you that you were a follower of the one true God. Even, you know, normal clothing. Now, most Jewish men today don't wear one of those garments at all times, although the Orthodox do. But when they go into synagogue, they will put on a prayer shawl that is just like this, and these were all purchased in Orthodox Jewish Religious Goods Store. On the neckband is a prayer in gold thread, and it says there, Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Baruch HaOlam, Asher Kedishanu B'Mitzvotav, B'Tzivanu Lehita Teif Batzitzit. You can ask Arlie for the translation later, uh, but let me give it to you now. It says, uh, it says um, Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the Universe, who has sanctified us by thy commandments and has commanded us to put on the tzitzit. And the tzitzit are these fringes. So having said that, in the synagogue, typically they will put on the prayer shawl and they will be ready to pray. So with the prayer shawl on, they will take the shofar in hand and for this Feast of Trumpets that you see on your chart, if you look back in the Leviticus 23 passage, you'll see that they would have a reminder by the blowing of trumpets, by the blowing of the shofar. So this is how it would have sounded back then. The shofar, the trumpet, was also used when Joshua marched around the walls of Jericho and when Gideon and his band of 300 men, when they were able to rout a much larger army. So let me give you a sense of how that sounds. And that's how it sounds. 